Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on Section 41 of the Copyright Act, Technological Protection Measures. Hey, do you guys remember the 90s? The World Wide Web was just beginning to explode. Despite only having about 10 million active users at the time, analysts were predicting that the internet was going to be a market for products and services that would grow faster than anything we'd seen in print or broadcasting. In response to concerns that the digital age would create new problems for copyright, and because other attempts to update the Berne Convention and TRIPS didn't address the internet in particular, the World Intellectual Property Organization adopted a copyright treaty in 1996. Digital files are very easy to copy, and this makes it very easy to violate copyright on protected works. To fight against widespread copying, rights holders began to use technological tools to control access to or copying of protected content. The WIPO Copyright Treaty, sometimes called the WCT, added protection for these mechanisms in Article 11. Contracting parties shall provide adequate legal protection and effective legal remedies against the circumvention of effective technological protection measures that are used by authors in connection with the exercise of their rights under this treaty or the Berne Convention. Canada updated its Copyright Act to add support for Article 11, but this took until 2012. They did it with the introduction of Technological Protection Measures, or TPMs, in Section 41 of the Copyright Act. The definition is, any effective technology, device, or component that controls access to a work or that restricts any activity, such as copying, that violates the rights of the copyright holder. To reiterate, a TPM can be used to control the uses of a work, but it can also be used to control access to a work. You may have heard of the term digital lock, which is a more general term used to describe TPMs. Now that we've decided what a digital lock is in the Copyright Act, we need to understand what happens when someone breaks one or tries to get around it. Most of Section 41 creates rules around the circumvention of TPMs, which the Act defines as descrambling or decrypting a work, or doing things that avoid, bypass, remove, deactivate, or impair the TPM without the authorization of the rights holder. There are nine subsections related to TPMs in the Copyright Act. These define what acts of circumvention are prohibited and provide a few situations where circumventing a technological protection measure is permitted. Probably most importantly, Section 41.1 states that no person may circumvent a TPM, offer services whose primary purpose is circumvention, or make, import, distribute, sell, or rent any technology or device primarily intended to circumvent TPMs. In general, then, you can't circumvent TPMs. The prohibition isn't universal, but the limited number of exceptions allowed in the Act makes it pretty close. In fact, you cannot circumvent a TPM for the purposes of fair dealing, which are outlined in Section 29 of the Act. The circumvention exceptions are limited to seven very narrow cases. Here are the reasons you can circumvent a technological protection measure. If you are in law enforcement, working for the purposes of national security, you need to get pieces of software to interoperate with one another, you are engaged in research related to encryption technologies, which are often used to build and implement TPMs. You need to prevent software from collecting personal information or verify that it does not collect personal information. You have perceptual disabilities or provide support services to people with perceptual disabilities in the case where the TPM impairs the accessibility of the content. You are broadcasting a copyright protected work and the rights holder has not given you a TPM free way to do the broadcast or you need to circumvent a TPM on radio equipment in order to get access to telecommunications service. This limited range of exceptions for circumvention is controversial. After the provisions were implemented in 2012, law professor Michael Geis shared statements from a broad range of dissenters over a 51-day period. All of the complaints echo the same theme. There should be exceptions to circumvention in cases where the digital lock is being bypassed for non-infringing purposes. As Sipic stated in his comments during the Copyright Act review, archivists and librarians cannot preserve locked content without breaking the law. Filmmakers, news reporters, and other innovative creators cannot legally access the content they need. These restrictions undermine Canadian innovation and the public domain. Furthermore, those who would infringe can easily access and use circumvention software through the internet. Almost all digital lock mechanisms are eventually broken. 
The locks thus do not stop those determined to break the law. Instead, they merely frustrate legitimate consumers and creators. On the other hand, groups like the Canadian Publishers Council believe that TPMs are critical to protecting their businesses, ensuring that creators are compensated properly for their works, and preventing unauthorized modification of digital contents, such as video games. These concerns were reflected in the Indu Committee's report in June 2019 from its statutory review of the Copyright Act, where it wrote, While anti-circumvention rules should support the use of TPMs to enable the remuneration of rights holders and prevent copyright infringement, they should generally not prevent someone from committing an act otherwise authorized under the Copyright Act. Technological protection measures can serve to protect the rights of copyright holders, but like the Copyright Act itself, there is a delicate balance to strike between the rights of creators and the rights of users. You should now be able to define technological protection measures as they are outlined in Canada's Copyright Act, summarize the conditions under which a technological protection measure may be circumvented without penalty, and understand the connection between Section 41 of the Copyright Act and the WIPO Copyright Treaty. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Section 41 of the Copyright Act, Technological Protection Measures. Thank you for your attention.